Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. Uh, you've seen some gaming on my channel, you've seen some toys on my channel, so I thought it might be kind of neat to combine them and talk about handheld gaming machines and devices that uh, predate the Game Boy and various other cartridge-based systems. Uh, this one is Digital Derby, and uh, it comes from 1978. Now, I didn't own this back originally. This is something of a recent purchase for me. But it's something I eyed as a kid and I thought it was fantastic and I, I really, really wanted it. Um, I did have one handheld game. Now, I remember um, back then seeing those Mattel football LED games and uh, the, the racing game where you're just a little red dot going up the screen. And I thought they were okay. I didn't really, they didn't quite wow me. And um, I did, for, for Christmas one year, get the Coleco game called Zap. Here, I'll insert a picture of it here. So that was Zap, and that was an alright game. It was like an LED-driven Pong kind of a game where you're just hitting the button and the light goes back and forth. Unfortunately, it was two-player only, and not a lot of people wanted to play it with me, and it was a very limited kind of an experience. So, combining that with the Mattel football games, I just never really got into handhelds. I, I didn't think they were all that interesting. With the exception of Digital Derby. Now, the reason I thought it was a lot cooler uh, was it reminded me of electromechanical games that you had in the arcades back then, which predated a lot of video games. Uh, you used to have... Um, uh, there's an interview where Nolan Bushnell uh, once talked about how he went into arcades and he saw a little man on skis rolling on a piece of white carpet. I remember that machine. I remember uh, other sort of electromechanical driven things, uh, submarine games, missile games, etc. And uh, I really liked the driving games that you used to get there. Uh, and when I saw the commercial for Digital Derby, I just thought, oh, wow, you can have that that experience exactly there in your hands. This is fantastic. I want to get this. Um, unfortunately, it was about... Now, I hope my memory serves me right. I seem to recall it was $25 or $30, which doesn't seem like a lot, but in 1978, I think that's maybe a week's wages. Uh, I recall a Mary Tyler Moore episode where she mentioned she pays $100 a month in rent. So... 25 to 30 bucks in those days, that was a lot. So yeah, I wasn't getting digital derby. Ironically, here I am, 40 odd years later, and I got digital derby off eBay for 30 bucks. The seller advertised it as complete in box, and as you can see, here it is. Here's uh, in, in rather good condition for its age, the Tomy digital derby box. It's been crunched a bit over the years, but uh, not too bad. Let's open her up here. You've got the styrofoam, and there's a another piece at the end there that's kind of stuck. But here is Digital Derby. Really, really cool game, this. Um, you use your steering wheel to uh, make the little car go left and right, and when you turn it on, the little cars that are here are uh, moving up and down the street and you're basically avoiding them in traffic. You've got your gear shift here. And what's interesting is um, because I guess they hadn't really sorted out how to do these games yet, it's not by a score. You're actually, well, it is kind of by a score. You've got how many laps you've completed down here. And uh, you're basically doing as many laps as you can before the timer runs out. It's, it's that style of a game. I'll turn it on here in a second. I want to get it so that the light is showing off the cars better. And I'm actually going to reduce the volume of the sound when I'm playing this. Because the one disadvantage of the way this uh, this game works, it's all gears. I'm not exactly sure why they call it Digital Derby. There's nothing digital in this game. It's all analog. It's all little cogs and wheels driving, which I am going to show you in a minute. Um, but unfortunately, the downside is it's really, really loud. So... Um, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, so basically it just uh, runs, operates by a couple of C batteries there. It seems to last a pretty good long time too. And I'm very, very pleased with this. I mean, this is 
even to, by today's standards, this is a lot of fun to play. I mean, it's it's kind of simple. Uh, when you um, if you uh, hit one of the cars, you actually set off a light. Like you see on the cover there, there's like a red explosion gel inside there that lights up anytime you collide with one of the vehicles. So um, I wouldn't say it it requires a lot of skill now. But what I like to do is sort of set myself the goal of can I get through the entire game without hitting any cars? That's actually quite challenging. So it still has some great replay to in uh, in this modern era. I mean, I've I've got a lot of driving games. You've you've seen my recent NijiCon videos, um, but this one still holds a lot of charm, and uh, it's just a lot of fun to play. So I'm 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 wanting to to talk about handhelds here. These these things still hold up today. I'm Almost as it were, honoring handhelds, which I think would make this section what? We could call it Triple H, maybe? I don't know. We'll see if that sticks. Anyway, let me uh, have a game here, and you'll see just uh, how the game plays, the uh, explosion indicator as well. Okay, I've adjusted the lighting a bit so you can see the cars more clearly. Uh, these are actually quite easy to see in, in regular light conditions, but this camera's got a little bit of glare, a little bit of um, white background to compensate for, so they look a little dark and hard to see. They are actually very, very clear to play with. Uh, the first thing that I need to do is set the uh, lap counter back to zero. It's around, I think it says 57 right now. So if I just turn this so that they're both sevens, then it turns both of them. There we go. So now we're at zero. We're ready to start a game. Um, I noticed the batteries that, in, that are in here are a little bit on their uh, last leg, so I'm actually just going to change the batteries out. So these are Duracell C batteries. Something else while I've got this thing open, um, the terminals here are a little oxidized. I mean, this thing is getting on 40 years old. You can even see there's like a lot of goo on the on that terminal there. I've asked around what's a good way to clean these kind of connections. I have tried the old uh, baking soda and water trick. That didn't make any difference. Uh, there's, a there's apparently a solution out there called deoxit. That's what uh, most collectors have recommended that I use. So can't find any deoxit just now, but um, that's what I'm going to use to just clean those up. So with my brand new C batteries, Let's have a game. There is no on button. You don't actually start a game. Even though there's a start reset down here, you don't just push it and start playing. Uh, what you need to do is actually hold this button in until the counter has gone around past the zero point up here and is actually beginning again at the top. Uh, essentially, I'm going to be holding this, allowing this to get past a certain stage, then when I let go and the cars are still moving, that means I've actually started the game and the lap counter has uh, begun. It's it's kind of a hard one to describe, but anyway, let me let me get this going here. There we go. Now we're playing. That's that crash sound, and the only way to get past. The only way to get past that is to hold the uh, reset start button. So basically what I need to do is just guide myself so that the cars don't collide with me. There we go. Oh. I had said earlier I was going to mute the sound. As it turns, as it turns out, with the exception of the of the crashing noise, it's actually not too bad for me to be able to talk over. the The grinding of the cogs is is it is annoying, but it's it's quite manageable. I mean, it's not going to disturb too many people around you. But that crash noise sure as heck will. So there's the end of the game. How far did I get? I got uh, 50 laps. So I've, I've managed to almost reach zero, 0 like almost rolled the counter with no crashes at all. It's surprisingly challenging to do that though. 
It's a really fun game. So that's Digital Derby, and it is a lot of fun. I really got to say it. It really makes for an enjoyable experience. Uh, when I bought this one off eBay, and again, this is just in the past year or so, fulfilling my childhood dream, uh, the uh, seller said it was in full working order, and unfortunately that was not true. And this is actually a second Digital Derby I got, but I decided to keep the packaging from the first one that I ordered. Here is the non-functional Digital Derby. One benefit is that I can actually open this one up and show you what's inside. It's quite fascinating. So if I just lift this off here, you can see the inside guts. And it's, it's amazing how simple this is. Uh, you just turn the wheels here to give yourself the laps. There's the steering wheel, which drives a little bunch of gears here. And this is your gear shift, which I have taken this off. I won't do it now, but underneath here is a whole series of cogs. And they essentially turn these little cams that move one car this way. They also move the center line. And, and you can also make out there's one car down here, too. So, yes, basically this is how the, the whole mechanism works. And there's the gel that lights up. Here's your batteries here. And up here is a very complicated item. I tried repairing this. That's why it's in pieces. And uh, this is inside here. I would not recommend you take this apart unless you're very, very good with small pieces. There are m copper discs and little tiny, almost hammers, if you will, that are all working on a gear system so that this will turn slowly and it will it'll cut the power to the game whenever it reaches zero. And it's, um, it's not for the faint of heart. I wouldn't recommend you go in there. But I think that's just a fascinating look inside a Tomy uh, Digital Derby. It's, it's a great little toy. So there you go. There is Tomy Digital Derby. It's still a lot of fun to play, even by today's standards. It's got, uh, it's got a good level of skill testing in it. And uh, if you were somebody that remembered that old electromechanical era, uh, this is a fascinating retrospective kind of a device or a game or machine. I don't, I'm not even sure what, it, what the heck to call these things. Handhelds. There you go. We are honoring handhelds in this Triple H section. So, yeah, it is a fantastic handheld and highly recommended if, um, if you've got any kind of an interest in either the electromechanical era or just handhelds in general. This one is great. And until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.